Russia has created a turbine with a capacity of more than 1,200 megawatts and Nevsky Zavid has begun construction of Russia's largest foundry for the most powerful gas turbines of their kind. Let's start with the turbines, which have a capacity of more than 1,200 megawatts. Such a product is manufactured at the high-tech production site of the Leningrad Metallurgical Plant, abbreviated as LMZ, in St. Petersburg. It was there that the world's only steam turbine with a capacity of more than 1,200 megawatts was created. What makes it so unique and why no one else in the world is ready to create such a thing? The first domestic steam turbine with a capacity of 200 kilowatts was created in 1907 at the Leningrad Metalworks. After 20 years, the plant produced a turbine with 50 times more power 10 megawatts. Between the 1970s and 2000s, the same plant developed the most powerful 1000 megawatt fast-moving turbine, which held the world lead for 30 years. It is important to note that today more than 30 power units of nuclear power plants in Russia, in the countries of the former Soviet Union and all over the world are equipped with high-speed turbines manufactured at LMZ. The steam turbine is designed for the entire lifetime of the power unit, which means it will supply energy for all 100 years. However, we want to talk about something else. In the 1990s, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia lagged a bit behind the world and ceded leadership to Western companies in this field, which were already warming their hands on supplying turbines to Russian nuclear power plants. In 2001, the Leningrad Metal Works made a triumphant return with a 1000 MW steam turbine designed for the Tianwen nuclear power plant in China. By a number of parameters, this turbine has no analogs in the world. An important role in its creation was played by Rosatom, more precisely its needs for such turbines for new generation nuclear power plants. After creating a 1000 MW turbine, Russia didn't stop there and soon went for the absolute world record of 1200 MW again. 1200 are very familiar numbers, aren't they? As many probably guessed, these turbines are used by Russia to equip VVR 1200 reactors, i.e. one for each reactor. A little later, the Leningrad Metal Works created Russia's first low-speed turbine with a capacity of 1,255 megawatts. Such in our country has not yet produced, so for its creation was erected a modern high-tech production complex. The main workhorses of the 1,255 megawatts low-speed turbine are three rotors, two low and one high medium pressure. It is this combination of cylinders that gives the best ratios in terms of economy, weight and plant size. The turbine weighs about 4,000 tons. If we compare it to the weight of a Ruslan transport plane and the cargo it can take off with, about 400 tons, it turns out that one turbine weighs as much as 10 such planes. Not without exclusive developments of LMZ. For example, the low-pressure cylinder impellers are unique in their aerodynamic and strength characteristics. The total length of the blade is more than 2 meters, weighing more than 100 kilogram. As Dmitry Komanovsky, head of the analytical department at LMS Investment Company, explained, Quote, with the advent of the low-speed turbine project, Russia will be able to offer customers all types of turbine solutions, high-speed and low-speed. This is a unique offer not found in the world, as around the world, they build mostly low-speed turbines. The latter type of turbine is twice as large, requiring welding of the turbine rotor parts, but gives a gain in turbine hull length, which is important to some customers. Now LMZ has become the first enterprise in the world to produce such turbines in both low-speed and high-speed versions. What are the differences between these two types of steam turbines? The slow-speed turbine spins at 1,500 revolutions per minute and the fast-speed turbine spins at 3,000 revolutions per minute. As nuclear physicist Andrei Azarovsky explains, to quote, the lower the RPM, the less wear and tear on parts, the less stress in the overall system, i.e. with the same efficiency as a fast-speed turbine, such a turbine can run longer and longer. Now the development in the world is going towards making turbines with lower RPM. The outer diameter of the high-speed turbine rotor is about 4 meters and the low-speed turbine rotor is about 7 meters. That's about the height of a two-story house. And at the nuclear power plant, the turbine is mounted on an 18-meter high foundation. It turns out that a two-story house is put on top of a six-story house. Can you imagine the size of that? Yes, it is the quieter version that is in demand in the world today, which is why the new generation LMZ turbine has more promise out of all the current ones. As for the high-speed turbines, they will be used in other projects. While there used to be two similar units in the world, the Rebel and Siemens turbine, today the West is actually losing its competence in building nuclear power plants and is therefore unable to repeat the Russian success. Oh, and the Western thermal power plants are having a tough time, too. It makes absolutely no sense for private companies to invest in developing more powerful steam turbines today, 
when the strategy to divest from fossil energy sources has been publicly proclaimed. And even if nuclear power plant production in the West is ever revived, it's not hard to guess how far away our LMZ will be. And so far, only Russian engineers have overcome the technical problems on the way to creating such a high-speed turbine. Today, Russian developers can offer the customer a high-speed and more compact turbine or a low-speed but more technologically advanced turbine. And in both cases, you can't find anything better on the market. There was also another good thing that happened. Nevsky Zavid started construction of Russia's largest foundry for the most powerful gas turbines of its kind. Unexpectedly for many, it turned out that Gazprom is not only about gas production and export, but also about the systematic and long-term localization of complex and high-tech products. Thus, the company has already started construction of the largest foundry complex in Russia. The specialized foundry complex will be located on the territory of the Uzlovaya Special Economic Zone in the Tula region. Construction will be completed in 2025 and the first batch of foundry products will arrive in 2026. As it became known, Nevsky plant, which belongs to Gazprom Energo Holding Industrial Assets, decided to localize here the production of one of the main elements of the combustion chamber of a gas turbine plant, abbreviated GTUT32. As Alexei Miller, the head of the company, noted during the event dedicated to the start of construction, to quote, today is a landmark event in the power machine building of our country. Gazprom is embarking on an active phase of construction of a specialized foundry complex where we will produce key and very complex elements for gas turbines. This unit is part of the gas pumping unit GPA-32, Ladoga. These units are used at Gazprom's gas pumping stations, including the power of Siberia gas pipeline. Today, 84 units have been produced. As for the main technical characteristics of the gas turbine, they are as follows. Electrical power rated 32 megawatts, electrical efficiency 36%, rated frequency 50 hertz. In 2014, an agreement was signed and the St. Petersburg plant received 100% of the technical documentation for all turbine components, and in 2021 the perpetual right to use the technical documentation for the turbine assembly, manufacturing and testing technology. In the conditions of import substitution, the company began to actively master technologies for manufacturing gas turbine components, including blades. High-tech production of blades for industrial, power and marine gas turbines will be mastered at 12 production sites of the new complex. More than 500 jobs are planned to be created for knowledge-intensive work. The new foundry complex will carry out a full cycle of operations. From preparation of materials to quality control of finished products and will cover Gazprom's needs. It is worth noting that blades are an important and at the same time the most complex part of a nickel and cobalt-based gas turbine, which requires jewelry machining. This is due to the fact that during operation they are subjected to the greatest impact of dynamic loads and ultra-high temperatures, approximately 900 to 1100 degrees Celsius. Therefore, they have a limited service life of 48,000 hours for high-pressure turbine blades and 72,000 hours for low-pressure turbine blades. The company does not limit itself to the localization process. The plan is to modernize the gas turbine unit, which is part of the Ladoga GPA-32, to increase the nominal capacity from the current 32 megawatts to 34 megawatts and the efficiency factor from the current 36.1% to 37.5%. Today there are more than 80 such turbines in operation at various gas pumping stations in Russia, and the capacity of the St. Petersburg plant will be 12 turbines per year. The cost of the project is not yet disclosed, but it is known that investment in the project may exceed 7 billion rubles. To quote Alexei Gorin, Vice President for Production Optimization and Development, localization of production solves very important tasks. Firstly, it will reduce the cost of GTU manufacturing and service, and secondly, localization work develops our engineering potential. A cadre of designers and technologists in the field of gas turbine equipment is being formed. Not inferior in terms of qualification to our foreign partners. Within the framework of the program, localization of main equipment for gas turbines, Nevsky plant has already mastered the production of even such a critical part as the combustion chamber of the turbine. Globally, this means that power of Siberia and other Russian gas pipelines have been, are and will continue to operate stably. And, as one can see, the superficially observed stability is given to the Russian gas giant not for nothing, but by a colossal, painstaking and knowledge-intensive labor.